Hey, fishy people, welcome back to the channel. So we've all seen them when we go into fish stores, pet stores, glowfish. Well, what are glowfish? How did they become commercially available to purchase at pretty much every pet store across America and across the world? Well, today we're going to be looking at these bioluminescent fish, delving into their origins a little bit and talking a bit about some of the myths and misconceptions about them. But before we do that, if you could please make sure that you click that little sub button for me. It really helps me out and I appreciate it a lot. And now let's get talking about these glowfish. Before we start, what actually is bioluminescence? Well, it's when light occurs between two chemicals within a living organism, which is an ability that many animals possess is this ability to produce light from within their bodies thanks to a photoprotein. So this is a specific photosynthetic protein within animals in nature. Things like the vampire squid, the hatchet fish, plankton, corals, jellyfish, they all have this ability. Now it's either to be used as camouflage, attract mates, to confuse predators, or to even scare predators off. So why then did we as humans decide to introduce these genes into things like the zebra danio or the skirt tetra or now beta fish and other things? So initially, back in the 90s, scientists in Singapore were looking into genetically modifying the zebra fish or the zebra danio to introduce these bioluminescent genes with the original long-term purpose to help scientists and locals detect toxins in waterways. They extracted the green fluorescent protein from jellyfish and inserted it directly into the zebra danio's genome. So they directly injected this into the egg of the fish. The fish could then be released into local waterways and depending on the level of toxicity detected in the fish's body would change colors, which would allow communities to know that their water was polluted and give them the tools they would need to then start protecting the water better. Think of it as nature's radiation detector. So if there was too much nasty stuff in the water, they're going to change colors and alert people to the bad nature of the water that's by them. So exactly how are these fish made? That's a good place to start. There's a lot of misconception and misinformation that these fish are injected with dyes or other things to force them to change colors on the skin level and you know thus killing them faster. Uh, this is however not the case and in fact they do have a similar lifespan to their nature counterparts. So depending on the species of what you have they can live from three to five plus years. So they're going to have similar lifespans to zebra danios or skirt tetras or regular beta fish. Now the glowfish are made through genetic engineering, similar to a lot of our crops that we eat. So if you look at carrots, carrots were not always orange. The original colors for carrots are purple, yellow, and white. But over time, they were genetically crossed and bred to create this orange coloration, most likely for growing purposes and higher yield out of the crop. Now with glowfish, it's rather similar. The fluorescent Gene protein comes from nature. It occurs naturally in nature. It's found in marine life, like jellyfish, sea anemones, corals. The green color, which was the original color, came from jellyfish. Red and yellow came from sea corals. And then to make like the pinks or other colors, they just slightly tweak the gene and inject it. Those genes are then directly injected into the eggs of back then silver or black danios and then later skirt tetras and then you know beta fish when they went to make those and that's how we get the color of the glowfish so there's no injecting of dyes they're not feeding them food coloring they're not painting the fish and they're not staining the fish like when you make easter eggs they're basically doing what we have seen in things like jurassic park where they took the frog dna and injected it into the dinosaur embryos to fill in that missing DNA fragments or whatever that they were missing. So after the initial batch of Danios were made and they perfected their, you know, 
process of this genetic trait being injected, the trait is now just passed along through the regular reproduction of these fish. At least that's the best of my knowledge on how they've got these fish now. They're basically just bred in fish farms. They Fish farms get a, you know, have these batches of fish and they just breed them like regular fish now. So there's no longer, you know, unless they're going to make a new version of these fish, they're really not injecting any gen genes or anything anymore. But, you know, I'd imagine when they go through making a new glowfish line, they go through the same process. They extract the genes that they've been extracting for decades now, and they just inject it into the egg. So I'm sure when they made the glow beta fish, they did the same thing. They just took the genes from these jellyfish or corals, injected it into those eggs, and then bada bing, bada boom, we got fluorescent colored betas. And now they're just doing it the old fashioned way. They're mating them and breeding them like a regular beta breeder would. Now, those are the origins of, you know, how these were first created. If we fast forward to 2003, a company called Yorktown Technologies purchased the licensing necessary to own the rights to Glowfish. Their CEO said that their first step was to make them fluorescent all the time and then slowly give them the ability to turn it on and off depending on when toxins were present. Now, since 2003, there are now well over a dozen different species and color combinations. We've got glow daniels, we've got glow tetras, we've got glow beta fish, glow sharks, and glow barbs. Now, my guess is there's going to be even more lines to come in the future. Now, how did we go from a natural toxin detector to these neon colored fish that glow in the dark, more or less? Um, my guess would be once these were released commercially, sales went through the roof. And, you know, kids, when they went to these pet stores with mom and dad to get cat or dog food, they probably were wandering around the store, saw these glowing fish, and were like, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, Daddy, I want them. Please buy them. Please buy them. And if anyone has kids or has worked with kids, you know that if they bug you enough, you're probably going to buy whatever they're bugging you for just to shut them up. Now, since then, over 10% of the freshwater fish in the hobby are glowfish that people have in their home aquariums. And if we're looking at that on a species basis, we're going to classify glowfish as its own species now. Uh, that's a decent size of the pie. Now, if we're just looking at like freshwater or whatever, they're still their own thing at this point. So that's still a good chunk of, you know, the whole pie being just glowfish. So there's a lot more out there in the trade than you might think. So there has, of course, been some environmental concern that if these fish were released into the wild through either accidental or malicious intent, they would destroy local ecosystems here in North America. So there's really no potential they'll be used for toxin detection. But the company assures people that they would not survive in the United States, that they would not breed in the United States, and that even if they did breed, they would not pass along that genetic fluorescent gene to other wild fish. Now, there's, you know, certain places in the United States where Tetras could probably live, Danios could definitely live. So there is that fear that this could happen here at some point. But the bright colors would not lend themselves well to, you know, hiding from predators. And they would have to, you know, struggle to find food. And hopefully the predators would eat them. Now, that is just all speculation and luckily not a reality here in the United States yet. But for countries like Brazil, where these guys are mass produced, at least the zebra daniels are in fish farms, they actually had an outbreak earlier this year. Uh, one of the fish farms flooded and a bunch of glowfish got out. This has happened with things like the powdered glue barami before. Uh, and the fear is that these will spread and mix with local fish and spread that genetic bioluminescence and cause this whole craziness to go on. Now, luckily in Brazil, there at the moment are contained to like small estuary streams and small rivers that haven't linked up with the main, you know, rivers yet. So they're they're able to stay there where there's not a lot of predators, but once these things get out into the main rivers where there's predatory fish, They'll probably get eaten and be controlled that way. But there's still that chance that they could thrive and outcompete local fish for food. 
which means you could lose local fish down in Brazil. But luckily that hasn't happened yet. I did a whole video on this. I'll put a link here for you guys if you want to go check that whole thing out. So should we buy glowfish? Is it ethical? What has been done to them? Has it negatively affected their health? All these questions are completely up to you to decide. All I can do is give you the facts as best I know them from doing some research on them. So the fish are not died in any way, has not harmed them to have this done to them. The process does not seem to have had any lasting negative effects on them or given them any health issues. They have virtually the same lifespan as their counterparts you find in the wild. The fish are not sterile, as at one point people thought, because they have been known to reproduce in people's tanks. Have I owned glowfish? Yes, I have. Once I looked more into them and realized that they weren't, you know, diet or anything like that. And in a way, it's actually a good thing that these fish exist. Because they're probably the reason a lot of kids and younger people have gotten into this hobby. Because when they see these fish at a PetSmart or a Petco and they're with mom and dad getting dog and cat food, they're going to go look through the store. They're going to say, Mommy, look, look, look at these cool fish. Can we get some? Can we get some? Can we get some? And they're just going to annoy them until they actually buy them. And, you know, eventually they're going to grow out of them and go for the more natural fish. And they could have the added thing of the parents then want to get into fish keeping because they realize how much fun they're having keeping these fish. So... In a way, it's very good that they do exist because it does bring a lot of people into the hobby. As we mentioned, over 10% of the fish in the aquarium trade in our tanks are actually glowfish. So there is a decent amount of, you know, when you look at it overall, that's a decent chunk of the pie. So, of course, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please remember to hit up the like button. Let me know you did enjoy this. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your opinion on glowfish. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.